I started doing a Sailor Moon rewatch recently, and for some reason, the lighthearted, fun, optimistic anime from my 90s childhood kept bringing me to tears. I couldn't understand why. Until a few weeks ago, I saw some of the most violently anti-LGBTQ laws targeting trans and queer kids specifically get passed into law again and again and again. And it hit me, watching Sailor Moon right now feels like chicken soup for the queer soul. In a moment when hateful forces of evil seem to once again threaten to shroud our world in darkness, Sailor Moon shines through as a beam of moonlight, this unbeatable beacon of hope, fighting for love and justice, no matter how impossible the odds seem. Hello, Sailor Scouts. I'm Jess Joho, culture critic at Mashable, and I'm here to tell you why we need the queerness of Sailor Moon now more than ever. To those in the know, the revolutionary queerness of Sailor Moon was never much of a secret. And I'm not talking about characters merely coded as queer, or LGBTQ fans with popular queer headcanon, or even just the inherent gayness of an astrology-obsessed group of girls who collect crystals to ward off bad vibes together. This decades-old anime show was eons ahead of modern-day Disney, which only just recently started kind of regretting its corporate funding of legislators behind Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay Bill. Disney's laughably underwhelming exclusively gay moments, or first gay Pixar characters, strategically kept in the background, pale in comparison to Sailor Moon's illustrious history of LGBTQ representation. The queerness of the anime's original 1992 Japanese release was extremely explicit, with outright gay, lesbian, gender-fluid, non-binary, and non-cis characters, and relationships with really significant plots. But it's not your fault if you can't remember any of those pioneering queer animated stories from the version of Sailor Moon that you probably watched as a kid. Because America, being America, ensured that all of the gay was censored out of the English dub. How'd you guys meet then? We're cousins. We grew up together. Huh? We've been inseparable huh? since we were born. We can almost read each other's minds. <sighs> like best friends? Most famously, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune went from being romantic partners to being very disturbingly intimate cousins who shower together and kiss on the mouth, since normalizing incest to children is apparently much better than the evil of, um, lesbians. But there were also the villains of season one, same-sex gay male lovers, Kunsite and Soysite, the latter of whom the American dub gave female pronouns instead. And there's just a bunch of kind of non-platonic intimacy exchange between all of the friends, full of moments where the girls who get it can pick up on something clearly LGBTQ happening. Thankfully, when Hulu became Sailor Moon's streaming home in 2014, it released all 200 episodes, uncut and uncensored, even working with Viz Media on redubs that reinstated many of the erased LGBTQ plot lines. Of course, in many of these cases, it's hard to definitively declare exactly which pride flag the characters would identify with. Aside from the fact that neither the creators nor characters use any of the contemporary American LGBTQ labels that we use, all their queerness is complicated by the decades-old sex and gender politics of two different cultures and male-dominated entertainment industries. What is undeniable, though, is that the Sailor Moon universe, in all its original forms, has never been one where binary, cis, heteronormativity was assumed. I mean, we're talking about characters who are often intergalactic, non-human, cross-dimensional beings. The expansiveness of their identities transcends all of time, space, and the strict boxes that people insist on putting each other into. And isn't that a true queer ideal? To simply live in peace, secure in the vast complexities of your own individual identity that you never need to explain or interrogate or justify as having a right to exist to other people. There's something 
unspeakably powerful about a kid's show that presents a world where same-sex love and non-binary gender identity doesn't need to be championed because it's just the norm. Most of the time, it almost feels like we're the weird ones as viewers for wanting to ascribe labels to them with language that only really exists to help make queerness more digestible to the more dominant heteronormative culture. As a lonely and slightly confused little girl who grew up in America, the powers that be decided I wasn't allowed to know that Sailor Moon was queer. Yet despite their best efforts, the show didn't need to say gay for me to pick up on how it made me feel, which was uniquely seen and accepted. And that it helped me love a part of myself that I'd only learned the words to describe decades later when I came out as bi. That's the thing about bigoted attempts to censor intrinsic parts of the universal human experience out of existence. You can try to outlaw and forbid it as much as you want, but queerness will always find a way.